got some strangers around that you may or may not have seen before on YouTube. And they are the queen of mudlarking. Hello! Nicola of Tideline Art and Sci Finds, the up and coming YouTuber mudlark. Hello, mud lovers. Here we are. I found something! Oh, I'm so excited. I'm really excited. Well, we're all out on a nice field. Pretty hard soil, but you can get through it. And this is quite a little hot spot here, so I'm hoping that Cy and Nicola will find some good stuff. Well, Cy Fines has just found a coin. I found this. I don't know what it is, but it's like an aluminium ball. I think it might be a button. Might not be. But anyway, big silver stroke aluminium ball. Weird. So Cy has found a Liard de France, which is a coin hammered around the uh, French Revolution, probably before. So this would be probably Louis the 15th, 17, blah, 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 late 1700s. It's nice, you can actually read it. Yeah, brilliant. You can see that Liard at the top, de France below, can't see that so well. So there's a nice little hammered copper from the 18th century. Or 1700s, which I prefer to say because it sounds older. First signal of the day, so you can only get worse from here. That's right. <laughs> the only way is down. Yeah. Right, so Nicola has found a beautiful tournoir from about 1350, uh, which is a two tower on the middle of it. And um, this is a classic French silver coin. And it rang up really low and she said, oh, I've got, I said, that's a nice thing, what is it? She said, 40, should I dig it? I said, oh, that's aluminium, right? And there it was, be a beginner. She thought, yeah, what does he know? And um, <laughs> it's a nice 1350 gross tournoir of um, Louis the Watch, we'll call it, or whoever it was. I think a load of them had this coin. Let's have a look at it. It's a little bit broken. So also. yeah, it's been hit by the plough, but you can see here, these little little dots, that's the towers. Let me turn it around a bit. Ouch. So there we are, you see the castle there. And on the other side, there'll be a cross. And there's your cross. And that is a silver hammered. French coin from 1350, of which I've never found. Cool. <laughs> well done, Nicola. We're both jealous, aren't we? Yeah, very much so. Green with well, envy. Well. Nothing, nothing better than a bit of beginner's luck. Well done, Nicola. Great find. Thank you very much. Not a silver coin from 1350 like Nicola found on the same sort of number, but a lead washer. <sighs> So I'm still not up to marathon treasure hunting. I've only been out here four or five minutes, but after this horrible flu I've had, I've had it. But Nicola and Cy, being robust, are out there, so they're hopefully going to find a lot more. I think I'm going to pack it in in 15 minutes and sit in the car, drink some water and rest up, do another hour in the afternoon. Uh, this is all the exercise I can use at the moment. Well, that looks like a hinge to me. Yep, that is definitely a hinge. So meanwhile, in my post-flu state, I've been lying on the bank here in a wonderful sleep for the last four hours. So I got in 30 minutes of treasure hunting, found nothing, crawled back here, curled up in a little ball while Simon and Nicola have been out treasure hunting. So Simon's found a nice selection of coins. He's got about four a double turn wire and a really nice revolutionary five centimes and a ten centime of Napoleon the third and a five centime of Napoleon the third and you'll probably see some pictures of that coming up later. Meanwhile Nicola has found more spindle whorls and she's got the find of the day which is a 14th century 1350 uh, silver uh, double turn wire uh, which is a really lovely coin to find and it's silver and she actually she was walking one way and I said, no, you probably don't want to go over there. You want to go there. It's all over there. That's where all the good stuff is. And she completely ignored me. And then about three minutes later, she got a signal. I said, oh, that's a nice signal. What's that? What's the number on that? And she said 40. And I went, oh, that's a bit of four. Good luck with that. And up popped this silver coin. So if she'd taken any notice of me, she'd never found it. So have a look at this. And I hope you saw that little flash of silver there. And you can see these little dots. And that's the tower of the double tower. And on the back there is a nice cross and that is billion probably 
which means that it's you know 30 40 percent silver and that is a tremendous find really old 1350 I'd say beautiful beautiful hammered silver coin I'm pretty pleased with that so these are the two other coins that Nicola found one would be a, a denier it's basically a basic unit farthing I suppose if it was in England a double a two there so a one and a two and they'll be from late 1500s and um, probably 1600s probably won't clean up probably won't find anything on them but that was the unit of currency for France I also have a little badge with Cycle Flesh Sartre written on it, so apparently a cycling club perhaps? Yes, I think this is going to be some sort of cycling club badge. As it says, bicycle on the top, or rather Cycle, Cyclers. That's rather nice. It'd be absolute murder to flatten that out without smashing it into a million pieces. But um, some things aren't meant to be flattened out. Isn't that lovely? So while I've been sleeping in the land of Nod, recovering from 30 minutes of treasure hunting, and they've been out here finding lots of nice things in that cornfield over there. Do you want to see some more toot? Yeah, go on, let's see some more toot. <laughs> so this is, this is Simon's toot, as he calls it. That's not toot, that's the, I'll just put that there, but this, these are the other bits in the, the other little keepers. So I think that's a thimble. Well, I'm pretty sure it's a thimble. Um, yeah, as you all know, viewers, this is what we find. Little copper coins and thimbles. So this is a thimble. It's a, no top on it. It's a topless thimble. And as we found our fantastic Roman medallion yesterday, which he then said, oh, that's probably a handguard, which, of course, it would go along quite nicely with a thimble. Spoiled by day, <laughs> but probably very right. So thimbles, there was a lot of them in these fields because they used to sew up everything. They would spin them spin their thread with the spindle worlds and then sew up the sacks with thimbles and probably protect the hands with hand guards. Clanger or bell, piece of. Un pièce de cloche, uh, that would be for your horses. Probably, I always think they did it just to show off. Yeah. So they were going to be going tinkle, tinkle, tankle, tinkle, tonkle as they went down the road. But of course at night, there's no street light, you know, you wouldn't really want to come around the corner and not hear another guy with a horse come in. So this would kind of warn you in the dark that there was some guy on his horse or a wagon going by. So that would be a bell, uh, and that's bell metal probably, or pewter bell. I think uh, that's a nice little button there. They've been holding this back from me. <laughs> so there's a nice little button top here, really nice little button top. Ooh, and it's lost forever. Yeah, yeah it's very nice. And some Celtic ring money. Uh, well, I think the little one is actually a ring ring, proper finger ring. For a child, perhaps. They didn't put rings on children. No, 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 didn't have that sort of money. Well, you know, they did have very, very small fingers. They were very, very small. And also what people don't realise is they often wore rings on the top joint of their fingers. Mm. They didn't wear it at the base of their finger, they wore it at the top. So that could actually be a ring. But the inside it's got a sort of ring sort of inner part of it so it you could be right you could have yourself a ring there yeah nice one uh, yeah a bit of a bit of a naily onto something thing a bit of bronze that would have been nailed on something hmm. that could be the find of the day actually funnily enough i took one of these and i cleaned it with a little metal uh, pen and up came a big, big picture of a dragon oh, nice <laughs> yeah that's what i thought at the time so these things will actually clean up and have something nice on them sometimes. One time in 50. Let's have a look at this ring. You know what, I, I thought he was having me on but I think he might be right. Might be a little ring. You find these little rings, you think, God, they must have been small to put them on. But actually, they weren't putting them down to the base of the finger, they were putting them onto the first joint. And that's why they're so small. So that's where they'll be wearing it. And you can see Nicholas' fingers are small enough for that. And so I've also got some busty ruckles, and oh, that's rather nice. If I collected iron, I'd say that's very nice. <laughs> I don't collect iron, so. Pfft. And uh, oh yes, very nice, very nice. Probably off the horses' harnesses. Without a doubt, here. without a doubt. There was almost as many horses as there were people.
Well, in my deprecated state, I'm struggling along here. So I've had it enough, really. I've had about another 30 minutes and I'm all in again, but I shall push on a little bit more because I just found this and it's looking like it might be silver, but I can't believe it really. It's very light. Maybe it's aluminum and aluminum, but it certainly looks silver. It's certainly got a silver flash to it and aluminum and aluminum tends to be really eaten up by the soil because it reacts very quickly with any acids around it. So we'll find out later. It's very light though, very, very light. Well, it says one franc and I can't read that date with my eyes, but I think it says 1918. But if it says 1948, that's going to be aluminium. Because it's very, very light, but it says one franc. Now, if it was pre-First World War, around First World War, it would actually be silver, but it just feels a bit light for that. In fact, it feels very, very light. So my guess is that this is going to be an aluminium one franc post-Second World War coin. But we'll see when I can actually read the blooming date. You can see it, but I can't. Anyway, that's really nice because I've never found a coin, a one franc of this particular kind of coin before. So that's really good. I'm really happy with that. Well, blow me down. I would never go down a road like this because it's normally just full of you know modern rubbish that um, the local workers have dropped and it's hard pack and uh, I don't like it. I've been pretty ill and I'm kind of recuperating. <coughs> I'm doing a bit of exercise to get my body going again. So now I'm coming down here, I get a 92 signal, clear as and beautiful as you can like. Bing, 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 bing. So come with me and have a look. It's not inflation money and that's fabulous. That's absolutely fabulous.